Perhaps you love them or perhaps you hate them. Either way, monorepos are a fairly good way of organizing code, especially when organizations start to get really large and applications start to become numerous. Having everything in a single repository and then having various access patterns to get at the different packages and different applications within that single repository can be a very good thing for the developers in your organization. Now, if you're using Prisma in a monorepo, of course, you'll want to have a way to make it available to the various packages and various applications in that monorepo. And today we're going to take a look at how to set that up in one of the more popular offerings for monorepos, which is Turbo Repo. So I'm here in my terminal. Let's get a new Turbo Repo project set up so that we can take a look at how all of this works. So the way that we can create a new project with Turbo Repo is we can do npx create dash turbo. So this is typically how we would start a brand new project with a monorepo using Turbo Repo. We can grab latest. And then typically from here, we'd give it a name, we'd get going. Now, if you wanna skip ahead, if you want to get just to the end state of this whole video, what you can do is you can pass this E flag, this example flag, and pass with Prisma. And that's going to furnish out a Turbo Repo project that has everything done basically that we're going to cover today. But I think it's going to be useful to see everything step by step. And if you want to do that, let's go ahead and get started. And so we just give it a name here, Prisma Turbo, and that'll get us to a fresh state. We get our choice of package manager. I like to stick with NPM personally. All right, so everything successfully ran. Let's now go into this project and get started. So, so CD into Prisma Turbo. And then we can open this up in our code editor. All right, so one of the main features with a monorepo setup is that we might have various packages that we can pull into other various parts of this monorepo. So if we're using an application that is using the website, for example, we can pull in packages to that. And here's where we'll want to get started to put some Prisma stuff into. So what we can do is cd into packages, and then let's make a directory here called database. And this is going to be where all of our Prisma stuff lives. Let's cd into database and let's touch a package.json file. Each of these packages needs its own package.json file to hold the various packages from npm that we might want. And so we can get started there. Let's go into package.json. We'll need a couple things here to get started with. The first is just going to be a name for this package. So name, we're gonna call this at repo slash db. And then a version, let's just do version 001. That should be just fine. So let's save the package.json file, and then let's install some things. And if we are used to working with Prisma in another setting, this will look fairly familiar. Let's do npm install save dev, and then it's the Prisma CLI to start with. Okay, cool, so Prisma CLI is there. Then npm install at Prisma slash client. We need Prisma client. So now we're at the point where we can initialize Prisma. We have probably seen that before, npx prisma init. So if we just initialize like this, what we'll get is our schema file produced. It's going to default to Postgres and we'll get an environment variable that's going to point to a local Postgres database. But instead here, let's do this. Let's pass dash dash db. And this will step us through the process of getting a Prisma Postgres database. Prisma Postgres is a serverless database. It's got no cold starts and it's got a very generous free tier as well. So feel free to go and get started with this. We can pick a region. I'm going to choose US East 1 and we'll give it a project name. Let's call it Prisma Turbo. Now, the very nice thing about Prisma Postgres is that it's up and running very quickly. So our database is going to be spun up. It's going to be connected to in just a couple seconds. And in fact, it looks like everything is done. We can check to see what the result is in the environment file. And it is a database URL pointing to our Prisma Postgres database. So everything looks good there. We also get our schema file like we'd expect. And this, of course, is where we can start doing some modeling. So everything else, because we're targeting Postgres, is the same as it typically would be if we weren't using Prisma Postgres. But it is a very quick way to get an actual remote database deployed for us. Let's work on this model a bit. The first thing we need to do here is change the output. And, and the reason for this is that we've got to specify a location for where all of the outputs from Prisma will go to. So all of the types generated, all of that, we don't want them to go into the node modules directory associated with this package. Rather, we want to put them into a spot that can be consumed by other packages and applications across the monorepo. And where we'll put that is going to be up a level into generated, and then we'll go client. All right, cool. So let's save this file. Let's get ourselves a model to start with, model user. How about that? So we'll just have typical user modeling here with an ID. We'll get email password. Sure, that's fine. We just need something to work with for now. 
Then typically at this point, we would go and migrate our database, but we do actually need to get a few scripts set up here in our package JSON file. What we need to get is scripts like this, and then we need some stuff to give us the various commands that we want to tie into from our turbo.json file. So cursor gave us this in the scripts area, but what we actually want looks more like this. db colon generate, migrate and deploy, that calls into Prisma, generate and migrate. And what we want to do here for the migrate dev step is skip generate. And we'll see that in just a little bit. It's because we want to separate these steps out, migration and generation. We want to separate those out so that Turbo has a way to deal with them on their own. All right, this looks good here in our package JSON. Let's now go to turbo.json, and this is where we need to add in some new tasks. And what we'll add in looks like this. So we have got db generate, db migrate, and db deploy. And notably here, we're setting persistent to true on the migrate step. And that's because this will allow us to interact with the CLI, the Prisma CLI, when it comes time to give our migrations a name, for example. All right, so let's save our turbo.json file. And now we can try to do a migration. So let's go back up to the project root. So up two levels. And now we'll run npx turbo db migrate. All right, so we're asked for the name for our migration. That's going to be init. And cool, it looks like everything has migrated. We've got our migrations directory. Everything looks good there. And a way to verify that everything does indeed look good is if we go over here to console.prisma.io, we should see the project that was created via the CLI. We can click into it here, Prisma Turbo. And we can go to the default development area. And we can check out what's going on here. For example, we could go to Studio. And what we've got here is that user table, that user model that we created, and it looks like everything has been migrated successfully. All right, so it's one thing to set up a Prisma package, a database package that uses Prisma, and it's another thing to use it across the mono repo. And there's a couple other setup steps that we'll need for that. So why don't we go through those right now? So you can imagine the first thing that you might want to do with Prisma in its own package is you might want to pull it into one of the apps and start making calls to your databases that way. What we should do first is create a Prisma client instance though. We'll make it a singleton so that it can be exported and then imported wherever we need it. So for that, here in our database directory, let's make a new one that we'll call src. And in here, we're going to have two new files. Let's make client.ts, and then we'll also have index.ts. And we'll work within these. Client.ts is going to be where our Prisma instance lives. I have got something on my clipboard here that should look familiar. We have got Prisma client coming in, and it's actually not coming in right now because we haven't done the generate step. We'll do that in just a second. And then we are getting this global Prisma instance where we are going to either export that or a new Prisma client instance. This is kind of the typical way that we work with Prisma in a Next.js setting especially. So actually, let's come down here to the terminal and we'll do npx turbo db generate, and that should put everything into our generated folder. So running that gives us this generated directory, and then we are able to get Prisma clients out of there now. Looking in the generated directory, you might see here what you are used to seeing if you go into the node modules directory and look in the .prisma directory within there. Now it's here under generated client. Okay, so we've got that. We've got our instance here. Now we have to export it from index.ts. So let's go over there, index.ts. Let's do exports. We'll export Prisma from client. We'll also export everything from that generated directory and in the client directory within there. This will now give us the ability to pull in our Prisma client instance and then any types if we wanted them from Prisma as well, anywhere in the mono repo. All right, one last step here. Let's go into package JSON and we've actually got to add an export here. So what it looks like is exports. Then it's going to go into the SRC directory into index.ts. So just setting up typical mono repo package stuff. And extending upon that, if we now wanted to use this somewhere, for example, here under apps web, we'd need to go into this package JSON file here and add it as a dependency. So we're already bringing in repo UI as a dependency. And so similarly, we would bring in at repo slash DB. So another package is coming in to be used in this app here. All right, so let's start to work on this app. We can CD into it, CD apps web. We can install everything here, npm install. Then let's come over here to page.tsx. We'll just replace all of this content with something that's going to give us a simple way to view things from our database. And we can start by seeing here, the stuff that I pasted actually isn't aligning with what's in our schema. So this is already type safety saving the day here for us. What we want to call into perhaps is email instead. That's available for us on user. 
So what's cool is we've already got type safety for our database calls. The database call that we're doing is this one here. We're getting a user. That's a wait Prisma user find first and just putting that user onto the screen. Now, one last thing, I know this is a lot, one last thing before we actually run this, let's go back to the turbo.json file and let's set things up a little bit more so that when newer developers come to this project, they're able to get started more easily. And that is to extend the dependencies here. So we've got this build step. We also have a dev step or a dev task here. And what we should do is add depends on to dev. So let's do that. We're going to depend here on DB generate. We wanna make sure that is done before this can run. So DB generate is what we're depending on. Same thing is going to go up here in the build step. We already have a build. We also want to depend on DB generate. We want those to run before these two things can happen, before we can run dev, before we can run build. We need to have Prisma client generated. All right, finally, we're ready to run this. So let's do that. We can run npx turbo run dev and filter to that web app. Let's run this. And we do get an error here. And actually there is one step that we forgot. And that is we've got this environment file here under the packages database package. So environment file is here. We actually need to have an environment file at our app level too. So under here, under web, we're going to create an environment file with the exact same content as we've got here in the .env file for the database package. So in web, new file .env, and that's going to just have the same content. So our connection string to our database. All right, so let's close that up and let's try this again. We'll kill this and we'll clear that and we'll run, run dev filtering to web. All right, so let's see how things look now in the browser and we are looking good. No users are added yet, but we can add a user. Let's go over here to Prisma Studio and let's add a record here. So just some random characters for the ID, whatever there, john at doe.com, that can be the email and the password is whatever. All right, let's save this change. Now back over to the app, if we refresh, there's john at doe.com coming through. So there is a fair bit of setup to do if we are approaching Prisma in a monorepo setting, but after we get it established, we can go ahead and use Prisma across the whole project. So in this application, we can pull in Prisma from the DB repo, and we can do the same thing in any other applications or packages that we might be working with as well. So if you've got any questions about using Prisma with Turbo Repo, please feel free to drop them in the comments below, or you can reach out to us. We're at prisma.io on the web or at Prisma on Twitter. Thanks for watching.